Right. So what we're going to do is, um, you know, start off this unit, which is working within teams. The reason why, uh, you know, the, the unit, it's quite an interactive unit, quite, uh, um, you know, a unit wherein uh, you will see that some of the things which are mentioned here are some things, uh, are things that we use on a day-to-day -day basis. So we always work within teams. We always work with colleagues or, you know, people within the organization where you're going uh, you know, to a place of work, you're going out shopping. Sometimes you uh, also interact with people and, you know, you take help from them. And what we want to be able to do with this particular unit is uh, try and understand in terms of, you know, things in terms of how team works, why teams are important, why teamwork is important within businesses or organizations. And if as a, as a person, you are at some stage looking at stepping into a supervisor or a managerial uh, responsibility, then how do you use uh, the concept of teams and teamwork to be able to, uh, you know, uh, get your work done, delegate work, and also, you know, in, in certain situations, we will look at how do you lead a team, so you show leadership qualities. In some cases, how do you motivate your team? That means how do you motivate the members within your team to be able to deliver on a particular job? So this unit is going to teach you things which are allow, which will allow you to step into a managerial role or when you are working as a manager or as a supervisor and you have responsibility for employees, then in this case, what will happen is there are things that you will dip in to this particular unit to you remember that some of the things that you have studied in this unit will actually be helpful. So how to motivate your staff, how to delegate staff, uh, you know, tasks to your staff, how do you show leadership in situations when it is required, what are the interpersonal skills that are required to work within teams. Sometimes you will see that you have to get work done but not be very firm with your team members because you, you are looking at using your softer skills or interpersonal skills to be able to, you know, um, exercise control and also influence in terms of how you go about doing those activities. Now, in this particular unit, um, you know, there are a couple of learning outcomes, but we are going to look at, you know, there are three or four aspects that we are going to look at, uh, which, which are going to be studied in this particular unit. And those are very important theoretical frameworks. So one is when we look at team, um, are you with me? Right. So when you look at team, we will understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, sorry. Yeah. So we will look at the concept of how team building is done. So we will study two models here. One is Tuckman's model of team building, and the other one is Dr. Belbin's, uh, you know, model of or roles within the team. When you put people in team, so he is renowned for creating, you know, uh, a structure or he did an experiment which allowed him to you know, think about people working within teams. When you try and put a lot of people together and bring them together to do a common task, there are people who will always try and assume roles. And these roles, when they assume, are bases, their skills, their strengths, their weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. And these are nine different kind of roles that we need to understand. So this is one of the key concepts that we have to look at uh, this particular unit. The second is, you will see that People who lead a team are normally leaders or are classed as leaders or managers. So what we have to do here is we have to study the different leadership styles. So there are lots of leadership theories and over the years, decades, lots of these theories have also evolved. So what we are going to look at is understanding what are the leadership styles and we are also going to do some, you know, uh, study to understand what are preferred leadership styles. Okay? When I say preferred okay. leadership styles, they would mean that today we are living in the 21st century. So what is 21st century leadership style? So we will study okay. that. Then the third important concept that we want to look at is when you are managing people, when you have staff who reports to you, when you have people who you can delegate jobs to, you have to look at always their motivation and loyalty. You have to make sure that people who work for you are loyal. You have to sometimes keep them motivated. How do you motivate them? So here we are going to study some theories of motivation. But I think, I'm not too sure, but if you've previously studied theories of motivation in another unit, 
this will be a bit of a recap but here we are going to be focused on something called personal motivation and i've done the i've done the task 3 actually of the for the motivation that's fine you uh, don't i i passed it to you. i haven't done the task 1 and 2 because that's the lever so i i left that for the weekend but uh, i've done task 3 which i already sent it to you and i'm going to do tonight task 4 and right. fine. Yeah. that's fine so personal motivation and what is demotivation so we need to look yeah. at these concepts demotivation what demotivates people sometimes you will see staff in your team in your team or within the organization gets switched off so we need to look at that the other bits that we look at is when you are a team leader and as you said you are looking at task 2 what is the concept of delegation you know what is delegation how do you delegate how do you effectively delegate that means sometimes you have to look at giving a task to somebody to be able to complete but how do you effectively delegate you know that is something that we have to uh, study also and understand that how leaders are effectively able to uh, you know give tasks to the employees so here what we have to look at is understand the skill sets and the strengths and weaknesses of the people which work within your team and sometimes you will see leaders team leaders actually delegate job on the basis of your experience your background and the skills that you have Yep. um and then one of the last things that we are going to study which are going to be which is going to be quite important is when we look at you know uh, within teams you will see that there are lots of relationships which are formed now these are called team working uh, you know relationships that means if you are going on a leave or you're not done well maybe sometimes you have it happens that you delegate some part of your job to your colleagues who pick it up in your absence so here we are going to be speaking and learning about you know what is uh, team working what is relationships and when you work within teams you will see that one of the things which arises quite often is conflicts so we will look at how do we resolve conflicts and you know how do we use interpersonal skills to work within the teams and look after each other in terms of team members and then ensure that as a team we are able to achieve the goal achieve the objectives so these are the key Uh, you know objectives of particularly studying this unit which is working within teams so there are five concepts that we have to look at and these five concepts you know i will allow us to understand how do you sometimes you know work within teams uh, if you have to lead a team how do you lead a team how do you keep your people motivated staff motivated and then how do you ensure that you have effective relationships you have relationships which work for you uh interpersonal skills and then when you have problems how do you resolve these problems these could be conflicts problems issues disagreements all this we have to understand in terms of how do we use uh you know some theory some facts you know to resolve issues disagreements or you know problems is that okay yeah this part what we are going to do is we're going to look at briefly today uh you know the learning outcome one which basically talks about understand the key features of an effective team so i'm going to try and cover these four assessment criteria which talk about the qualities of a team uh, team styles uh, how and what uh, what is the style that is your style so we will look at doing a personality test or we will look at doing a leadership style test to find out what kind of a person you are uh, when we look at a team uh, you know preferred style so in this case uh the idea would be to study what is called the dr belvin's role so when you look at i'll give you a bit of a handout and that handout will is explain what are the nine different kind of roles and how do you look at these nine roles and which role you normally assume in a team when you when you are asked to be a part of a team or become a part of a contingent or a shared responsibility when you are working within an organization is that okay yep so let's go ahead and look at uh, the first uh, learning outcome uh, and the first learning outcome with regards to some of the slides you know which i've actually put forward you know for us to be able to uh, you know look at understanding working with the teams so the first thing that we're going to do is if you tell me how do you define uh, a team do you know what is a can you think of what is a team well there's a lot of different teams what what we're talking about work team right 
Yes, work team, yes. Yeah. So but when you team. say, yeah, when you yeah. say a definition of a team, sometimes you will say, you know, when, when, when we, let's go back. So why do you think organizations or, you know, when, when you work, why do you think you need to form a team? What is the purpose of forming a team? What is what is what? What is the purpose? You know, what is the reason why we need to form a team? Okay. Uh, um, but there's there's a lot of different reasons why we're working in a team. Every got different perspective. Every everyone got different views. Everyone working in something else. Totally agree. So when we look at, say, for example, um, um, you know, the reason why we look at forming a team, I would say that sometimes when you have to look at achieving a bigger goal, which cannot be accomplished by one person in uh, one person alone, then sometimes you will see at the place of your work, your manager, your boss, uh, you know, will put two people together or three people together to be able to do a particular task. And the reason why he puts two or three people to do that task is because one, he feels that the task is something which is difficult enough for one person to accomplish. And the second is he tries to create, you know, some sort of a synergy to say that if this is the bit in, uh, this is the way in which the task or the goal is going to be achieved, you need certain amount of skill set or skills in the people to be able to finish and, uh, you know, finish and achieve that goal. So the purpose of creating a team is primarily looking at creating a framework that will increase the ability of employees to participate together in some sort of a planning exercise or a problem solving exercise or decision making. And that is where the concept of team formation actually starts. Isn't it? So I'll give you a practical yeah. example. In UK University, we know that we are going to be having the graduation ceremony. So this yeah. is a big event. Now, this event cannot be handled or planned by one person. Somebody is going to be the project manager to basically drive this as an event. But what will happen is at some stage, there will be a lot of help that he will need from individual members who are working as a part of that team to be able to drive and make sure that the event is successful. So in this case, the purpose of forming a team is two or three reasons. One, it's a very big job or a very big event. So that is what one person cannot handle. So a lot of people will work in this event, uh, work for this cause to make the event successful. Correct? Yep. The second is, you will see that sometimes when you have to accomplish bigger goals, there is a lot of decision making which needs to be done. So sometimes what will happen is a lot of people will work within the team because they have knowledge and experience and background and they will bring an extra, some sort of an expertise to be able to drive that forward. So in my team, I have two or three people who have done previously some events. They have, uh, you know, been a part of the graduation ceremony last year. So they bring to the table experience and decision making ability, which allows them to move and go through the task list quite quickly. Do you agree with that? Yeah. Yeah. And the third thing would be that because it is a big event. What we need is participation from our colleagues. So sometimes you give them responsibility to say that, can you do this? Can you do that? And that allows them to participate in the overall activity. Yeah. Yeah. So when we look at teams and when we look at working within teams, it is important to understand why sometimes you form a team within a place of work or, you know, even sometimes at home when you have kids. And, you know, your kids are fighting. What you do is you break them up and you say, okay, let's do something. What you do is you put them together and you say, okay, let's do this exercise or let's do this particular task. So you divide the task between the two, two or three children and you put them into a group. And that grouping is also something which is taking them, taking their creative energies into doing a particular task. But you, in a way, what you've done is you've created a team, isn't it? Yeah. 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 Well, why do you think teams are important? Why do you think we, we it is important for us to work in teams? I think, can you think of some reasons why is it important to have a team or work in teams? Because we can, we can done the, the work quickly. We can, we can communicate with each other. Absolutely correct. So one of the clear reasons of putting <coughs> people in teams 
is that you are likely to perform the task quickly or complete the task quickly and that allows people to if you know become more effective and more productive within the place of work so when we look at the various reasons of why you look at uh, working in a team and why team is important we now clearly understand that why we need to sometimes work as as two people together in a team or two people together as a group and a number of people together as a uh, team member to be able to accomplish that task because it helps us complete work quickly and in a much more efficient manner now let's look at some of the qualities that uh, you know help make a team what do you think are the qualities <coughs> which will make a team what kind of qualities are required to be in a team Oh, what kind, what quality? I can't hear you completely. Right. What I'm saying is, can you think of one or two reasons or one or two things which allow the teams to work? You know, why do we look at, what do we look at in terms of qualities? So if I have to go into a particular team, like when you look at project management, the project manager has a number of people working in the team. now what are the qualities he looks at when he picks up people to put in his team can you think of qualities which are required for you to be a part and parcel of a team yeah yeah i mean of course you you need to be able to work in a team uh, if uh, if you have qualities like say i would say no. if i have qualities like i'm presentable i'm docile i'm courteous i am helpful you know various qualities which people look for or managers look for sometimes when they put people in teams like when you look at the recruitment process a lot of organizations when they recruit people they look at certain skills which are you know academic and experience skills but at some stage they look look at also something called soft skills or skills interpersonal skills which are required because they don't want to hire somebody into the organization which is going to come and disrupt the environment that means create a disturbance they want to look at people who can come in and work adapt to the environment be friendly and that is what makes the uh, interview process uh, you know choose them when they look at you know working or hiring people isn't it okay yeah so when you look at teams and when you look at people when they work within teams the basic things that we look at is communication you know they are able to communicate well they are able to communicate openly transparently with other colleagues in the team the other thing that we look at they are very good at sharing if there is a problem there is an issue they discuss openly and that allows you know them to build trust and confidence amongst the other members who are in the team yeah sometimes you will see the team members some of the team members have a quite a good sense of humor you know they are able to crack jokes they are able to break the ice as we call them if i put some strangers into a room which which have never met each other you will see sometimes one or two persons you know if there are 10 people in the room they are all new they have not met each other before but you will sometimes see one or two people you know they start interacting by saying hi hello i'm raman you know i've come from here and you know and they they try to break the ice they try to you know break that silence so people when they work within teams they are also you know good communicators they are able to have a bit of uh, you know sense of humor they also have a sense of responsibility they are honest they are transparent and at some stage they discuss problems and issues openly and these are the qualities that you look at when you want the team to become an effective team isn't it you don't want people who are going to keep secrets you don't want people who are going to be introverts you want people who are open and they are able to understand talk to each other communicate well and then if they land into problems or have issues they are able to discuss to solve those issues to move that forward is it it yep okay so basically the first part that we need to understand is you know that uh, what makes a team why is what, what is a team why is team important and then we want to understand what are the good qualities or what are the qualities which actually uh, you know make the team effective so communication honesty openness uh you know uh the sense of sharing and also uh you know uh, transparency which allows uh you know the um, team members to work work effectively within a team now the second thing you want to understand is what are the different types of teams that we can look at you know how many types of teams can be formed 
can you think of situations wherein you see different types of teams? A simple uh, example that I will give yeah, you. Well, what, 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 what team or um, firemen, they're working in a team? Absolutely. So when we see teamwork happening in an organization, when you see firefighters, you know, uh, going out for a particular job to rescue people or, you know, fight a fire, firefighting, firefighters are a team. When you look at police department, they are a team. When you look at, uh, you know, uh, sometimes you see, you, you know, you see the sky, sky cycling team, you know, the cycling team, Britain's cycling team, which is sponsored by Sky, they are a team. So they work together, they train together, and they are able to, you know, accomplish great objectives by winning, say, for example, the Tour de France, the, the, you know, the Giron in the Italy. And they've been able to win these competitions because of teamwork, because they are working together. Now, when we look at types of teams, you know, there are different types. One type would be there are virtual teams. Now, an example of virtual team will be that you, you look at Facebook as an organization. Now, Facebook has employees all over the globe. But when we have people working on a similar project, like coders or programmers, you will generally see that sometimes there are programmers based in India, they're based in the US, they're based in England, Switzerland, Sweden, and all of them are in different locations, but they still are able to work on a single project. And they are connected by a team manager or a team leader, and that team manager, team leader based in, say, UK, manages all of them virtually. So an example of this team is like a virtual team. That means they are based in different locations. And because they're based in different locations, you know, this, this is a team. The person is a manager, team manager, but he's managing virtual resources because they're not in the same location. Is that okay? Yeah. Yeah. The second time of team that we can look at would be a team which primarily talks about, you know, functional teams. You know, when we say functional teams, functional team would be, uh, you work within an organization or a department and you are in administration department. So you're a part of the administration operation team. You work within finance. You're a part of the finance team. So somebody's doing payroll, somebody does, you know, accounting, somebody does taxation, somebody does, you know, VAT, but they are all a part of the finance department. So they are a part of what is called the functional team because that team is headed by a chief financial officer or somebody who's a general manager for accounts and finance, but within his team, he has all the people which work on the same type of function. You know, they're all accounting or related to accounting. Is that okay? Yeah. So this is a functional team. Now, sometimes you will also have what is called cross-functional teams. What is cross-functional team? Cross-functional team will be teams which primarily consist of um, an example here I would give you is that uh, when you look at, say, Apple or, or Samsung, when they launch a mobile phone, a new mobile phone, what happens is you will see somebody from the engineering department, somebody from the marketing department, somebody from the, uh, you know, sales department, somebody from customer services, production, they all work together to create a product launch, right? But they are all coming from different departments. But for the purposes of the product launch, which is a new phone that they are launching in the market in the UK example. They all come together, but they are coming from different departments to work on this one small project, which is going to last maybe a couple of weeks or months. But when the product launch finishes, they all go back to their own individual, you know, day to day function or day to day role. So this part of this type of team, which is formed is called something called cross functional team. Is that okay? Yeah. So when we look at different types of teams, we look at, you know, there is a classification that we can follow. And this classification that we look at, you know, could be a basis, the functions could be the basis, uh, you know, where you are based in terms of geographical locations. And sometimes when you work within a particular type of department. Okay. Okay. Okay with that so far. So some of the slides that I have drawn up now, when we talk about what is a team, why team is important, describe the qualities of team. We've discussed about, you know, communication is one of the important quality to be a member of a team. Okay. The yeah. second point that I've uh, said is sometimes, this is a good point. Sometimes when you look at qualities of team, what you see, people, when they come together, they have a certain amount of focus. They are all focused towards achieving a particular type of goal. So when you look at teams which are formed within particular departments, 
why they look at taking somebody on who's from finance or who's from sales or who's from marketing is because they want to make sure that the person joining the team is able to understand their end goal and is able to focus on that goal. You cannot have a marketing manager work within a finance team because he or she would not understand what is the day-to-day -day requirement of the role and you know their skill set is something totally different. So when you recruit, as we say, horses for courses, you are looking at making sure that when you put a team together, there are people who have the same goals and want to achieve the same results. Okay. Then uh, I mentioned some other yeah. points like supportive. The the team, the, the people who come together in a team are supportive. They contribute. They share, uh, you know, information. And and sometimes you will see when managers put together a team, they also put together a team which is a diverse team. That means they have different backgrounds, they have different skills, different strengths, and they come from different areas because the idea is to have a versatile team. That means you want to be able to handle all situations, all problems, and no one person fits all kind of a strategy works. So sometimes leaders form teams which bring people from different or diverse backgrounds. Is that okay? Yeah. Yeah. Now, other things which are important is that you will have people who will support each other. They'll have a sense of humor. They'll be able to resolve conflicts, um, you know, and uh, obviously able to do their contribution of fair amount of work. So I've listed down a number of points which you can actually look at to understand, uh, you know, why teams are important and what are the qualities required to be in the team. Okay. Now, in the second part, what we discussed is what are the different leadership styles? So what are the, sorry, what are the different types of teams? So types of teams, as you mentioned, working teams, sometimes you will say problem solving teams, virtual teams, special task force teams, you know, like a product launch is being done, uh, the company will pull together staff from different places and that, that will be a special purpose or a task force team just to launch that product. And once the product is launched, they will disband that team. Everyone will go back and do their usual jobs. There are multifunctional teams. So there are different types of classifications that we look at. Sometimes when you see, uh, you know, teams being formed, but broader qualification tends to be functional teams, cross-functional teams, virtual teams, and sometimes we also, uh, you know, call them what are called working teams. These are the four broad types of classification. Is that okay? Yeah. Yeah. Now, when we look at, depending on the level or the tier of function in which you are working, you will sometimes see that you have management team as well. And you have other types of teams which are formed because they are higher enough in the organization. So the board which runs the company sets the objectives. You know, the company's board, that is also a team. The board is not made up of one person. It is made up of chairman and there are some non-executive directors and that is also a type of a team. So when I say management team, they are a part of a, a type of a particular type of team. Is that okay? Yeah. Now, so in the first learning outcome, what we are trying to look at is to understand team. Why is it important? What are the different styles or types of teams? And then what we need to do is study for the merit activity, what is your team style? What is your preferred team style? So here, when we look at studying our preferred team style, that will allow us to, you know, basically uh, achieve what is called, you know, uh, merit task. And then what we have to do is, um, you know, we have to look at understanding um, how would you put together a team which is successful? So maybe take an example of, an organization or an event like a charity event if you've done or if you've done some volunteering, you've been a part of a particular team. So you have to explain that and what approach you have taken to form a particular team is something which will help us do the distinction activity. And if I give you an example of the distinction activity would be that, say, in my kid's school, there was a parent board being formed, parents board. And what I had to do is the principal spoke to me and she said, uh, you know, can you take a lead on this because you seem to know about education and can we form a body which is called the parents board because uh, your son is studying here and, you know, you can speak to some of the other parents to get representative and form a board. So what I did was I took undertook this as an activity and with that activity, what I did was I did a bit of an outreach to some of the parents I knew uh, in my kids class 
And then what we did, we did some discussion. We had, had a meeting. And then within that meeting, we discussed what roles could be taken up. So somebody could be a convener, somebody could be a secretary, somebody could be a chair. And then we formed a parent's board and then we presented it to the school. So in the school, the parent board functions, uh, you know, to do certain activities. And in that activity, which I did, I ended up creating a successful team, which is called the parent board. So for distinction activity, what we'll have to look at is we'll have to talk about what is my, uh, you know, how you have to take an example, assuming if you're aiming to look at the distinction, so you have to take up an example that you have, uh, in which you have actually put a team together to achieve a particular task. Okay. Is that okay? And when we yeah. talk about the preferred team styles, here, what we have to do is in terms of, you know, an activity, I'm going to give you this Belvin's team roles. And we have to study the Belvin team roles to understand. Uh, so after this presentation, you know, I'm going to send you this handout. And when you put people together in a team, Dr. Meribit, uh, you know, Belvin actually did this study in the 1950s. And when he said uh, in an experimentation that when you try and put a lot of people together to do a task, what people do is they are, they are he classified them into three different types. There are people who will be doing and acting on certain things. There are people who are going to be thinking and are going to be problem solving. And then there are going to be people who will be actually looking at, uh, you know, just doing the work. So he classified them into three different roles. And uh, and in, within each of these roles, he discussed and created the nine individual roles, which sometimes we see within a team formation. So when you put a lot of people together, you will see some people come together and they are always, you know, uh, creating problems. They're always difficult to accept a situation. They do not accept things easily. They want a logic or a reasoning behind why is this being done? Why are you doing it? How can we uh, achieve this if we don't do this? They will ask you these kind of questions. So, so these kind of people are people primarily who look after, uh, you know, and fall into a particular category. So what we have to do in this particular merit task would be to look at your own preferred style and in that own preferred style, uh, you know, in the merit activity, what you have to do is in your own preferred style, uh, you have to basically see which role actually you correspond to. So are you an implementer? Are you a shaper? Are you a planter? Are you a specialist? Are you a team worker? What kind of role you fall in? And this, if you look at putting it into your assignment and then doing an analysis or, uh, you know, putting forward a reasoning that this is my role if I'm to put in a team, I see myself working at this particular role would actually help you achieve, you know, your preferred team style. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay, good stuff. Any questions on the learning outcome one? No, I have a, no question. I will contact you if I do. That's absolutely fine. So what I'm going to do is um, send you a copy of this presentation, send you the Belvin's uh, style, this handout which will allow you to study the merit activity. And on the distinction one, you have to pick up an example that I've explained to you um, uh, of anything that you've done as a small activity wherein you had one or two members of team. If you, uh, and then you explain how you put that together. Why did you approach that person? Because you would basically say that, okay, this person has that experience by background. And that's why you looked at, you know, forming the team and okay. that's why it's successful. Okay, brilliant. So I'll catch up with you in the next session. And the ones that you've sent to me, I will assess and I will come back to you, uh, you know, with regards to sending you some feedback, if they're okay, or, you know, you need to read them or, you know, if they're fine. All right. Okay. Brilliant. Yeah, sure. Thank you very much. Let me stop the recording.